Well, good morning, friends, and a very warm welcome to you today as we share in this time of worship. As we take this time to turn our attention to God, we begin with these words from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So let us exalt his name together as we sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. Well, we've been singing God's praise, so let's continue to praise him as we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we rejoice in that you loved the world so much that you didn't spare your only Son, but gave him for us all. We praise you that though he is the eternal Lord, he took our human flesh and lived among us as a perfect man. We thank you for his life, his teaching, his death, his resurrection. We rejoice that he lives again and will one day return. How great are your blessings, our gods. And as we lift up our voices to you in song, we delight in knowing that you delight in us and that you rejoice over us with singing. As we praise you, we give our lives afresh to you this day. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who breathes new life and power into us, that we might live life with you and that Jesus may be seen in us for your glory. Lord, thank you for all your goodness and mercy toward us. It gives us the confidence to ask that whatever our need may be today, you are greater. And whenever we find our strength running out, teach us to wait upon you, the one who promises to renew our strength and restore our joy in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
in whose name we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. The reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, reading verses 25 to 31. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. my eyes on you, O Lord, focus my eyes on you, to worship in spirit and in truth, focus my This morning we're looking at Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. For those of you who are maybe a bit older, you're perhaps used to the more familiar uh, version from the King James Bible, which says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Today, I, I want to think for a wee while about living a strong life. And we begin by looking at the word here, but those, but those who trust in the Lord for help. That kind of states, doesn't it? It tells us that there are, there are people who go through life without faith, without belief in the Lord. And they may place their trust in many different things, variety of things, but it's not in God. And the opposite, I think, of a, of a strong life is, of course, a weak life, just as the opposite of a, a strong character is a weak character. And the opposite of a strong faith is a weak faith. 
But no one has to go through life like that. The Word of God promises to us, doesn't it, that God strengthens those who are weak, who are tired, who are weary. And this was a promise that was given to to God's people, who, after years of captivity in Babylon, were losing hope. Losing hope that God had any kind of future for them, or that God could change their situation in any way for the better. And many of the people were turning their eyes and their confidence and even their worship away from God. Listen to this from verse 27. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice? Now, we can all face difficult times. We can all live through challenging situations uh, and, and be challenged in those situations. But when we begin to say, well, doesn't God know what I'm going through? Or God doesn't know? Or doesn't God care? Or God doesn't care? Isaiah would say, you are wrong. There is nothing beyond his compassion or his power. You know, God will and does graciously help those who don't love him and who don't include him in their lives. But this verse is to God's people and it says that God will will help those who trust in him, those who wait for him, those who hope in him, who say, as Psalm 62 says, I wait patiently for God to save me. I depend on him alone. So what about this wonderful promise? But those who trust And the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. Let's think firstly about this word trust. Those who trust in the Lord. In Hebrew it's the word keva. And it literally means to wait or to look for with eager expectation. It's really about living patiently with a confident hope that God will save his people. And that's maybe why the word is so often translated differently in the various Bible translations. For example, the King James Version, as we've seen, has they that wait upon the Lord. The New International Version has those whose hope is in the Lord. And the good news here has those who trust in the Lord for help. I came across a a really interesting quote on this word keva in relation to hope and this is what it says hope has an eternal home in the human heart as long as there is a future there is hope but only the believer can really express their hope in the future for it belongs to the Lord alone the wicked have no such future nor hope God is the source of hope for his people and he has promised them a future and a hope. Interestingly, this word keva um, can also mean to bind together. And we know from our Bible that our future and our hope are bound together in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So who is this Lord in whom we are to trust? Well, he's the creator. Verse 26 asks the question, you know, um, to whom can holy God be compared? Is there anyone else like him? Look up at the sky. Who created the stars you see? The answer, he who brings out the starry hosts one by one. He leads them out like an army, doesn't he? Because of his great power, and his amazing strength, not one of these is missing. Then in verse 28, the Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. The God, the God we are called to trust is the everlasting God who created the world and the heavens and is sovereign over all. His work is always well done. He is the God who created you. He is the God who never grows tired or weary. 
He is the God who never runs out of resources and he is eager to strengthen those who are weak and tired because he can. You know, as, as I thought of that, um, I my mind turned to Jesus' invitation in Matthew 11 where Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. Here, I think, is the draw of the Saviour who says, Come to me. So we have the promise, but those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. The promise to those who trust, who hope or who wait with expectancy for the Lord to help is that they will find their strength renewed. Again, this word renewed in Hebrew is an interesting word. It's the word kachalaf, which means to change. Listen to the whole verse. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Do you want to live each day in your strength or in God's strength? If you're not trusting in God, all you have to depend on uh, and to draw upon is your own strength or the strength of people who are as flawed and as fallible and as weak as you are. How does an eagle renew its strength? Well, every year an eagle loses its feathers, it molts, and it gets new feathers in that exchange. It's like a renewed bird. So this picture of the eagle is an example of how God will renew us if we will exchange our strength for his strength. Not just like an eagle once a year, but each and every day. Where are you depending on? Whom are you depending for your strength? Now, Paul says in Philippians 4, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Whatever we face in Jesus, we can be renewed day by day as we exchange our power for his. But this promise isn't finished. It says they will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Again, Paul wrote to me in Philippians 3 about running straight towards the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Jesus Christ to the life above. That's running, but there are also times when we simply walk. And I love Genesis 5, where Enoch is celebrated as a man who walked in fellowship with God. What a wonderful description of a life. As we take each day in our stride, and walk through that day with God. The promise for us is that we will walk and not get weary. That's a great promise, isn't it? So how do we trust, wait, or hope in him? Well, firstly we pray, don't we? The most important thing in your life is, is your relationship with God. And if you want to be a strong person, then you need to have a strong prayer life. So each day we take time to speak with God. But whatever is going on in our life, whatever we are needing help with, the first thing we do is take it to God. Prayer is the way we live each day, walking in fellowship with God. Secondly, we listen to God. 
Psalm 106 verse 13 says that the recurring problem with God's people was that they forgot what God had done and didn't wait for his counsel. They tried to solve things in their own way. They tried to overcome their problems by themselves. Now, when we open up our Bible, we look for God to speak to us. And Jesus says, doesn't he, that my sheep hear and listen to my voice and they follow me. Well, we hear his voice primarily through his word in the Bible. So as we read, we listen for his voice and we learn to follow him. And, and so we return to our text for today. Those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. God bless you as you trust, hope and wait on him. We bring now to God our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving God, our Creator and Redeemer, we come before you searching and seeking, doubting and hoping, trying to follow you, to understand you, to know you better. We approach with hearts and minds aware of the abundance of your love, grace and joy so we feel able to bring before you the needs of others in prayer. We pray for people who are struggling with their health, physically or mentally, for people who are in difficult relationships with partners, family, friends or colleagues, for people who have experienced loss and are struggling with bereavement, in particular, we remember the people of Hawaii and of Canada as they struggle with disaster and destruction. For people at home and abroad who are filled with uncertainty about the future and who are struggling to put food on their tables and money in their pockets. Loving God, help each one of us to bring them all peace, comfort, and hope. We pray for our country and for all those who call it home. We pray for those who have been forced to come here because of violence, war or persecution in their own lands. We pray for people of all sorts and backgrounds, whether that be nationality, ethnicity, class 
or sexuality. God of unimaginable love, help each one of us to be neighbours to all. We pray for your church as it continues to seek to do your will in these difficult times. O God of abundance, help each one of us to work for the good of your people, the furthering of your mission and the coming of your kingdom. We pray for your world, for those caught up in the destruction of war and for those who cannot see an end to their struggle and despair. Mighty God, may each one of us be led by your Holy Spirit to bring relief, peace, care and hope to every situation that we encounter. Incarnate God, we pray for ourselves, for all those gathered here in this building and online, and for all our families and friends. May our hearts and minds be ever turned towards your kingdom, towards our neighbours, and towards you, our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our hope of years to come. Hear all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, for we pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen. thank you for joining us today and as you seek to go through this week waiting hoping and trusting in God may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always Amen <music>